Okay, what I want to talk to you about, uh, because I've never really done this before, is discuss the project of building a scratch-built submarine. At least how I do it. To give you a bit of a, a picture on what it's like. It's, it's like the ultimate in project design and management. Because you've got key spots that you've got to get to and achieve and you've always got to be ready to go back to the beginning again. It's the ultimate uh, challenge, I think, to get a model submarine working when you scratch build. So what's the process? Okay, let's imagine that you know what you want to build. You've thought it all through, you know how big it's going to be, blah, blah, blah. What's the ballast system going to be? There's a whole lot of decisions that you have to make and sort of get into place in your head before you're actually going to begin. And I like to multitask, so I like to get a lot of the different things going. So for, for example, with the Nautilus, before I started the hull, I was building propellers, interestingly enough. So, I mean, you can buy all this stuff off the shelf, uh, it costs you an arm and a leg, or you can scratch build it, and it's darn sight cheaper. I think this is going to cost about 600 bucks or something, uh, Australian dollars, but there you go. So the process is, you start with the hull, build your container that's going to hold all of the bits and the hardware. So you, you want to get to a point where you've got the hull of the boat, let's say it's like that, you've got the hull of the boat roughed out, you've got it so that in this case you can pull them in half or however it is you're going to enter the boat and you've got to think about that too because there's different ways of doing that. I just rip them down the middle. So you've got all of that done and then you want to put the bits in. So you want to think about how the motors are going to go in here, you want to think about the rudders, hydroplanes, ballast tank, all of that sort of stuff and start assembling it inside the hull in a logical way. And as you go thinking all the time about keeping the weight down low, making sure everything is, is nice and nicely placed and the ballast tanks in the right place and the motors as far back as they can go, all that sort of stuff. So you work all the way through that, and once you've got the hull, and you've got all this stuff in place, sort of that's really like step one, and we're really uh, getting somewhere now. So the next thing to do is to start some of the rest of the modelling. So, for example, you want to build your sail, you want to build some different bits and pieces, whatever it is. But we're not going to go into detail, because there's going to be a lot of work going to go into this, and we're going to ruin our detail. So what we need to do, but we need the sail on, we need to know how heavy it is and all that sort of stuff and all the bits that are going to go into then the process of making this thing work. That's stage two. Stage three, we get the soldering iron out and start getting all of this wired up inside so that it all works and then you get the RC out and you get it all running and you can see all, all the bits working on the bench. That's pretty exciting. You put all those bits in and you've got it all working on the bench. Now that's a pretty exciting moment. Okay, then you go to the fourth stage, which is, is it waterproof? So you have to test all of these parts individually, and I find generally it always leaks. There's always something, and you have to test everything. You cannot not test. Oh, I'm pretty sure that'll be, no, it doesn't work. You'll find, you'll find problems as you go through, and your, your ability to look for problems is as important as your ability to make stuff because you will always have problems. So once you've got everything waterproof and it's all working and basically that's when you drop it in the water for the first time. Now this is pretty, this is a exciting and devastating because it never works right first time. At least scratch built boats don't. Some people I've seen, I mean it works straight away and they say oh it works straight away. Oh, give me a break, never works for me. That'll roll over, fall, that sink, blah, blah, blah. Now this is the point where submarine building is completely unforgiving. It will either work or it won't. So then you've got to work on this and it means sometimes shifting things around, putting some foam in, putting some lead in, all of that sort of stuff because what you're looking at is getting the trim right under the water and that's going to take a little bit of time. It, it take, it's taken me, in, with the Nautilus, I reckon 10 to 12 tries in my little tank to get it working as I want. Just to give you an example. And it sank by the stern at the first time. There you go. So it can be pretty devastating. 
and you've got to be prepared to go back to basics and start again, change things structurally to get it right. Okay, once you've done that, and the thing's looking pretty good, you've got to see how it looks on the surface, because it's all right to have it submerged and have it neutrally buoyant. The next thing to do is to see what it looks like on the surface, and that's going to take a bit of shifting around maybe too. It did for me. I had to change a number of things on the Nautilus to get it to look right on the surface. Now the next step, once you've got it working in the tank, is you need to take it out somewhere and give it a run. This is where you want to see what the power's like. You want to see what, uh, where, where, whether it at least it's going to submerge and hold its depth. You've got to try all of that out. Generally, the first good starting point, if you can, is to go to a swimming pool. I'm, I've done that in the past, but they wouldn't let me this time. I can't believe it. Occupational health and safety. What, what a lot of rubbish. Anyway, I couldn't do that, so I had to go to another pond. So you have to try it out. That's going to mean changes again. For me, I had to change the rudder. I had to do quite a number of things with the boat to get it to run properly, getting it sit, sitting up nicely when it's running under power. That's the next thing. Once you've done that, you can rip everything out of the boat and you start to detail it and start to make it look really nice. Get all of that done, get it painted, get it looking really good, put it all together, put all of the electronics in and then you've got to test it again because it's changed. And then you do your final, this is your final, final trim. So you test everything again and whoopee.